Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Marta. Uh, I'm going to teach you this lecture about recurrent neural networks. Uh, next week, uh, uh, again, the second part of recurrent neural networks and attention based mechanisms. Okay? So today we are going only, we have changed a little bit the schedule. We're going to see one hour of this, and then Xavi goes on with reinforcement learning to prepare the talk of Uriol Vinyals that I hope we are, you are all registered to that. Um, okay, so who is familiar with recurrent neural networks? At least, has. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, uh, so recurrent neural networks ha, uh, have been there for a while, quite long now. And they are used to model sequences, basically, OK? Uh, what is the importance of modeling sequences? For example, in a language, uh, the language is a sequence, OK? So if, if, you, if you want to know the, the probability after, uh, of, of a sequence of words, you need to use recurrent neural networks, OK? For example. But not just for language. Uh, in images, as I'm going to, uh, to show, you also use recurrent neural networks, okay? So this is the outline of this class, okay? We, we are starting with this, with the importance of modeling context and sequence modeling and all this. Then uh, we are making a brief overview of feedforward networks. Uh, we are explaining the vanilla recurrent neural networks, which, which are the, the simplest uh, RNNs. Then um, we're explaining some problems of these vanilla RNNs, and, uh, which is the vanishing and exploiting gradient. And in theory, here we are stopping for this class. And next lecture, we are uh, going to see uh, gating methodol methodology to solve this vanishing pro gradient problem, and other recurrent neural networks extensions and, and, and a use case. Okay. It depends on how we, we progress. Uh, okay, so, so the importance of context. Uh, another application, l l tell me another application where, where, you, need, you, where you need to, to use context. Uh, I have mentioned that this, the, uh, knowing the probability of a sequence of words. And tell me an, another application in for example, in language, another application, artificial intelligence, probably that you use. In DNA, sequences. Ah, sorry? In DNA, sequences. The, the DNA sequences? Uh, in, uh, nice, in biology. Oh, okay, very nice. Another one? Um, okay, so just. Uh, things that you use every, way, uh, every day. If you want to recall your phone number, you, you use a sequence. If, you, if they st somebody tells you the, the fifth letter of the, uh, 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 um, of the alphabet, normally you, 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 you start from A and then repeat the sequence. Uh, and real applications are, uh, well, real applications, the other ones are the applications in our everyday life. You have this language model, which is just the language model for those that you are not familiar with languages, is this finding the probability of a sequence of words. So for example, uh, my name is Marta, is, is a quite frequent wo uh, sequence. So that would be uh, a high uh, probability sentence. Whereas Marta is, uh, uh, no, I don't know. Um, Potatoes are uh, flying. It's not probable. Okay. Uh, machine translation is another application. So it's similar to language modeling. Just the difference is that you have two sequences. Okay. You you have a source sentence, which is the the language uh, you have at the input, and then you have a target sequence, which is the translation of this input. Okay. And you model this uh, similarly to a language model. Uh, but with two different sequences. Or speed recognition, the input, you have a wave, 
and at the output you have a text. Okay. And in images, as I have said, uh, although you have a fixed sequence, it's not like in language that you have a variable uh, length sequence, you have a, 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 a fixed size of the image, you can also process the image in a sequence. For example, here we have two, two applications, one on the left by DeepMind, uh, on the left is it, the, networks, the network length to recognize the numbers of, of, of houses, and on the right is to put colors to the, to the, to the numbers, okay? So sequences are everywhere. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, uh, you have seen fit forward uh, networks. Uh, can we model sequences with, with, with fit forward networks? Okay, as we may have been using different notations, I, I start with, with the notation. Uh, first, uh, X uh, is going to be our inputs. H is going to be uh, the, the hidden layers, okay? And, and Y is going to be the, the output, okay? And here we have the equations of, of a feedforward uh, network and, and the, 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 the diagram that shows the con that connections that go only uh, forward in the network, okay? So with feedforward networks, we can model sequences, okay? Uh, the idea is that, that we want to predict x, t mm, plus one when we have the previous, the previous history of this sequence, okay? So we can do that with feedforward networks. Um, the thing is that we, we use a, a fixed window and this is our input of the fit forward network and our output is the prediction, okay? We can do this one, two times, three times, as many times as we, as, as we, as we want to, as our sequence goes on, okay? What's the problem of that? Or you don't see any problem, we can do that. Perfect. Any ideas? Well, no, you could you can do this this input as long as as long as you want. The problem would be that, that Perfect. You are using a static window. That's, a, that's the first problem. So you cannot have variable length context. Perfect. But thanks for trying. Um, fast growth uh, in the number of parameters. That's what the third problem. Uh, you have independence in time steps. What are time steps? This work is going to appear a lot. It's the memory that you want to include in your, in your network, okay? So if you, ho if, you, if you want your network to have a uh, uh, memory of 60 characters, this number sh should be 60, 60 time steps, okay? Uh, so it doesn't care about the previous time step in this case with this architecture. And what you said, uh, can work with variable sequence length. Okay, so these are the, the main problems of uh, using this, this, this approach. So let's try to solve it, no? What recurrent neural networks propose to do? Here, uh, uh, we have the, the main equation of recurrent neural networks, okay, on the left, and on the right we have the diagram, okay? Forward neural network, recurrent neural network. The only difference is this loop that you use, okay? And in the tra translated in the equation is basically that what you have is uh, your uh, hidden unit depends on the input and on the previous uh, time step, okay? Which is this h t, t uh, minus one. Um, 
basically here uh, you see that it's a little bit more complex than fit forward networks you, you have this dependency uh, because if you take out this you have the, the fit forward network okay um, let's see um, then in the, our output is simply a softmax of uh, this uh, hidden layer okay this this was the same in fit forward networks just for curiosity, this is the number of parameters. We have uh, number of, of inputs per number of units, number of units per number of units. And this is just for you to have the, the slide, for you to, to think how many parameters we need with these recurrent neural networks. But let's see a picture that explains a little bit more in detail this loop. No? Uh, so the thing here, we are unrolling the network. Okay, so. If we have, uh, this shows more clearly what is a recurrent neural network, okay? A recurrent neural network has two depths, no? Which is the forward and the time step, okay? The main difference is, is that this depth in time can be really long, no? Because as, as we mentioned, if you want to have a memory of 60 characters, you you have 60 units here, okay? Uh, and ba basically you have mm, two directions, no? The forward in space, as I mentioned, which is this third term of the equation that you are familiar with, which is the fit forward term, and you have the time. Another difference with fit forward networks is that uh, these matrices, which are the one from space, the one from time, and the, 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 one, the one in the software, are shared across all, space, uh, all steps. No? This is to avoid the problem that, you, that we have, that all time steps were independent, that we mentioned for the forward, and, and also uh, we have less part, um, less uh, things to compute, no? And then it's here. Okay. Um, there are variations on these recurrent neural networks, okay? You, you, I'm sorry about this because I, I took, a, just not to draw another diagram, I took it from, from the deep learning uh, book. And here you, you have the output, the loss, and the, and the, and the reference, okay? You just just like in our notation would be here we would have a y okay and that's all you forget about the loss and the, and the y above but you can have recurrency with the output step okay this would be a variation in the other diagrams we had the recurrency in the hidden state um, you can have outputs in every hidden unit here, like here, you have outputs, or here you have only output in the last term, okay? Um, there are many applications that only require this last output, okay? For example, in sentiment analysis, when you want to know if the sentence is positive or it's negative, you just need the final output. You don't need outputs in every single word. You need the output at the end of the sentence. So, okay. These are different alternatives. Uh, and how do we train this? Okay? Uh, with bad propaga propagation again. But the we have to do some variations to the standard back propagation algorithm that you have seen. Okay? And it's called the back propagation through time. Okay? You remember back propagation? It just uh, well, uh, pre uh, pre the algorithm present a training input pattern and propagate it through the network uh, to get the output. Compares the predicted outputs to the expected outputs and calculates the errors. Calculates the derivative of the error with respect to the network weights and adjusts the weights to minimize the error. And you repeat. Okay. 
but here the, our th uh, the thing is that we have uh, time and you have uh, we have to take it into account okay apart <coughs> from the space here on the left we have again the equations and on the right we have the uh, what we want to minimize which is the expected error okay uh, why is the is um, is the our uh, uh, our out the, the the output and 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 with the circumflex above is the uh, our what the network produces so the difference between the the the, the, the truth that that the output that we have to output and the output of our network is the error okay and we want to minimize this and this is what the back propagation system minimizes okay so our goal is to calculate the gradients of the error with respect to the parameters uh, which are our matrices u double b um, and b and then learn good parameters using stochastic gradient descent uh, we sum up the errors uh, we also sum up the, the, the gradients at each time step for the training example okay let's see one uh, just let's we situate our, ourselves in the in the in the last state and see how we propagate this error okay uh, we have the output we take the derivative the derivative uh, of y3 with respect to h3 and then What's, what's the thing here? Here we have to apply the chain rule because we cannot apply to the derivative of H3 with respect to H2 as if H2 was a constant. Okay, no, H2 again has to go back to H1. So what we have is the derivative with respect to HK, which are all the previous steps, okay? Um, So that would be, well, you know the chain rule, no? It's that would be here in the h h three with respect to h two, the h two with respect to h one. Okay, so like this, we we are multiplying. Okay, that would be back propagate uh, through time. Okay, the main difference is that we are, apl are applying here this this chain rule. Okay, uh, that di didn't happen in in the feed forward network. Okay. So okay, that 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 is very nice. You can have a network that models sequences. But again, what problem do you see? The key is here in the chain rule. Do you think that this network can memorize, I mean, 60 characters as we said? Why not? Well, it's intuitive. We are going to explain it. But the idea is that you cannot multiply and multiply infinitely. I mean, we get you, you, you get lost in these multiplications, okay? Long range mm, dependencies are lost in this in this in this framework, okay? So for uh, uh, and you need long range dependencies in languages, okay? You see here it's just an example, not very long, but you need to know that she refers to Maria. Okay, or whatever. Ah here I have the, the chain rule. Okay. Uh, in detail. Um, 
So that's a problem, no? That 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 you keep multiplying, 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 and and I have not said so, but normally the the function of the recurrent neural network, that the, the function that we had in in all equations, it's a, a an hyperbolic tangent or a sigmoid function or whatever. Okay, uh, so. When you start multiplying this, what you are multiplying is the derivative of this function. Well, it's a derivative. And uh, you see that mm, it can have very tiny values, OK? And if you have these very tiny mu values multiplied once, once, once again, you at the end, you end with a, with a 0, OK? So when you train this back propagation through time, you arrive to zero, okay? So, so you cannot train your, your network. Um, there have been several proposals for this, okay? You have the problem, this is double the problem. Eh? One is to train and, 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 and another one is the, 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 the exact, or that the long dependency of the recurrent neural network, network, it's also multiplying, so, with the previous hidden unit, so you get lost there as well. So standard solutions for this are um, mm, proper initialization of the weight matrix, regularization. I don't know if you have seen regularization, but it's sim simply a way of generalizing better in recurrent neural networks, we could say. And Also, we could use a different uh, fun function activation, okay? Like ReLU, which ReLU is just um, a function like this. It's not a tangent. It's a C, uh, like this. Or, or what we are going to see next, which is the, um, the gating units, okay? Uh, the gating units solve this, this problem of vanishing gradient. Because, by the way, this vanishing gradient can also be an uh, exploiting gradient, okay? If you are multiplying, if you change your function and you are multiplying uh, derivatives that are very high, then you have an explosion of the gradient. However, the problem of the vanishing gradient is uh, more important, more difficult to solve than the exploiting gradient, okay? Because the exploiting gradient, you just fix a, you do fix a maximum, I could do some clipping, whatever, and it's easier to solve. That's why we refer to as, as a vanishing gradient. Okay, now just, so I'm skipping five, uh, we're going to see gating units next session because I want to do them without rushing. Let's just see a use case of the recurrent neural networks, okay? We have the application of a character-based uh, uh, language model, okay? So you, you want to model the probability of, of, of a sequence of characters. So we have, um, let's take as an example the word hello, okay? And we have these four characters, H, E, L, and O. Uh, we codify them with this one hot encoding, which you, you might be familiar, okay? So uh, we have a, four, uh, a vector of length four, an H is one in the first position, zero, uh, E is the second position, uh, L the third one, and O, okay? This is our way of codifying it. Uh, we have uh, <coughs> This diagram, okay, we have the input layer, the hidden layer, and the output layer. In the input, we have the characters. In the output, uh, we have the characters after each input character, H, we have E, E, we have L, okay? Uh, here, in the output layer, we have the probability of each uh, uh, character. In green is the, 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 the probability that we want to maximize because if, we, if you remember from the 
codification, uh, E was codified as 0, 1, 0, 0. So if we have the maximum in the second position is that we have the character E. If we have the maximum uh, if in, the, in the third position L, and so on. Uh, so the idea is that this network, which here I'm showing all, we have three, uh, three units in, in, the, in the hidden layer and we have all the parameters that we have to train. And the idea is that um, our network does not only depend on the input. So because here, for example, we have an L in the input and we have an L in the output, but we have an L in the input and we have an O, an o in the output. So our O kind of depends on the previous character, okay? That's what the recurrent neural networks achieve, that it's not dependent on the input, but it's also dependent on the previous characters, okay? That, that is what we, what we wanted to train, okay? This, this is what's uh, our objective, uh, is our objective with the recurrent neural networks. You, you, you have this toy example in, 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 this, in this block of, of Carpathy, and you have the program that you can play with, and it, uh, I highly recommend it because then, then you know how, how the recurrent neural network works, works with a very easy uh, example. Um, so, okay. Um, for me, uh, I'm going to, f to, to leave it here. You can finish uh, the questionnaire, please. Uh, it, I think it, it helps you organizing concepts of, 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 of things to put, to put numbers uh, down. Uh, and next lecture, we are going to, to see this, uh, how we solve the vanishing gradient problem with gating uh, units, okay?